Welcome back to the Goodbye Poor Hello Rich show with me, your man, your guy in the chair. I'm still in the kitchen in my house outside of Brighton. I'm Des Hamilton. For those of you that are new here, I started with £200 in September 2022 with no experience of e-commerce side hustles, secondary businesses on the internet, nothing like that. And I gave myself a goal to turn that £200 into £100,000 within a two-year window. Completed it, mate. <laughs> 21 and a half months I managed to do it because it turns out I'm actually quite good at this. I know. I started as an Amazon seller, built up various income streams to the point where I've now got six where I sell on Amazon. I do affiliate marketing. I do public... No. I do digital services, digital products, YouTube ad revenue, brand deals and sponsorships. We are dabbling with print on demand, but that is a whole other story for a whole other day. We are getting into TikTok shop in a very, very big way. Bring it on because I think that income stream could overtake an awful lot of the others. And I'm also rolling out something fairly new that I'm not quite yet ready to talk about. But trust me, when I do, it will be worth it because everything that I want to do comes back to the purpose that I've got embedded within me is to show people that the life you are told to live that we are farmed into isn't the one that suits you. Quite frankly, I did it myself. The sword that broke the camel's back, I was 42 years old, fully educated, university degree, my wife, university degree, public sector jobs, I was a police officer, I was a civil servant. You couldn't get more country, could you? You couldn't get more patriotic and chest-thumpingly UK, could you? My wife, secondary school teacher, in the trenches doing maths, a subject as old as dirt. <laughs> Why were we skint? Why didn't we have enough money? Why was our money dwindling all the time? Why was the quality time we were spending with each other and with our children dwindling? Why, when we had a Saturday, were we too busy worrying about what was coming around the corner for the next Monday that we couldn't be present with our family anymore? I'd had enough. On top of that, the government at the time, the Tories, decided to batter things, so our mortgage went up nearly 50%. Water went up, food went up, fuel went up, taxes went up. The quality of your roads went down. The quality of your living went down. You couldn't heat your house the way you used to because it meant you had to cut back on your food. What? And it done me. I'd had enough. So do I get me head down, buckle down, learn something new, get good at it, do it properly, take it seriously, and get my head down for five, six years and then earn more money than I could have ever dreamed? Or do I carry on staying in my lane, worrying, penny pinching, getting me head down for the next 25 years, where if the stars align and I've still got my health, I might have a pension? That's not a choice. So I did the first one. And here we are. Here we are. I've got a podcast now that's in the top 15 in the country, actually in the world, if you include the business category, and we are flying. We are just getting started with what we're doing. And what I've realized this week, where it dawned on me, is that the reality of it all. This is where I say thank you once again to our fantastic sponsors, Celeramp SaaS. Celeramp SaaS is a sourcing analysis software designed to help you flip products on Amazon. Scan any product you like in a supermarket or any shop that you want to go to or online. Scan it with the Celeramp SaaS data software and you get all of the results you would need in order to make informed decisions on what to sell on Amazon. Now, this week, I went to the networking event hosted by Alison and Al Colton, the two owners of Celeramp SaaS. And it was a strange one because not only was it my first networking event, I was advertised as being there. <laughs> Imagine it. Imagine it. 
Two years ago, I started selling on Amazon, and now not only am I being invited to these things, I'm actually advertised. Des Hamilton's going to be there. <laughs> what? <laughs> I walked into that room, and I felt nothing but warm because I bumped straight into Peter. Peter, I know you're listening to this. Peter's part of my Facebook community. I was recording on my phone for a YouTube, and I could see this guy looking at me thinking, who is that nutshell? <laughs> and it turns out he knew me. <laughs> He clocked me, uh, so we went for a coffee, and then we walked in with a couple of other people, one of whom didn't know who I was. And Jeff, if you're listening, it was a pleasure to meet you, and it was really nice that you didn't know who I was because you made me feel comfortable whether you knew it or not. But we went in, and I immediately recognised some of the people that were in my Facebook community. So I knew I had people that I knew and who knew me. Oh. I've got to say this as well. Al and Alison were kind enough to put on a free bar. So we grabbed a drink and then I became aware that a lot of people in the room knew who I was and I didn't necessarily know who they were. I'm Irving, right? Imagine it. I should imagine this is what fame feels like. This is what Justin Bieber feels like. Yes, I'm comparing myself to Justin Bieber. Live with it, right? <laughs> I'm in this kitchen 99% of the time or I'm talking into my phone. So it's easy just to close off and just imagine that I'm talking to myself, even right now. And I know the numbers on my screen. I know when I get these followers built up, I know these are real people. I don't buy bots or anything like that. But only when you go into a room and you see people face to face and you talk to them, I realize I'm affecting real people. It's really overwhelming if I stop and think about it too much. And if I stop and think about it too much, I may get crushed by the weight of expectation. So I try not to. <laughs> but being in that room was lovely. And if there's one thing that we've often talked about when it comes to selling on Amazon and the community there, everybody is lovely. Everyone's great. And everyone appreciates what everyone else is trying to do in making money. And I know I've made content that some people don't like. And I know there's content out there that I don't like. It doesn't mean anybody is scammy or it doesn't mean that anyone, quite frankly, is full of shit. It, it's perfectly fine to disagree with someone and still like them and still be friends. That wasn't necessarily the case there today. I, want, I just went on some weird little tangent. But it was amazing to meet some people who didn't know who I was as well. Go back to Jeff, it was great to meet him. One of them was Jack Bayliss. Jack is the guy that heads up aftermarket arbitrage. You would have seen Jack. And that's a Discord group with lead lists and things. And now I don't often talk about this. In fact, I don't think I actually have talked about it at all. But Aftermarket Arbitrage was one of the places that I went to to get proof of concept of flipping things on the internet, not just Amazon. Because back in 2022, Aftermarket Arbitrage were big on flipping PS5s and trainers, especially trainers. I had a discount, a big old discount from the Food Review Club. I follow that guy because he's awesome. And I got 75% off for that month. And at that point, I'm learning all I can about e-commerce before I actually go live on my challenge. So I joined this Discord group and it was, again, a lovely community. A good bunch of people. Everyone was willing everyone to succeed. And that was really, really important to me when I stepped foot into this e-commerce thing. But what became clear to me during this research phase, supported by the aftermarket arbitrage Discord, is that it's not just Amazon only. It's not. It's always more than Amazon. Everybody does more than Amazon if you want to be a big success here. They were flipping things like Pokemon cards, football cards. The Amazon leads were fairly new at that point, so they weren't necessarily overloaded. And I started taking them and look at these leads. I hadn't had Seller Amp at that point. I was just using Amazon Seller Central app because I was proving the concept. I needed to know that if I could buy something from a shop, it would turn a profit. On top of that, Jack was doing live calls every week. I don't know if he still does because I'm not in the group anymore, but he was going live and I would listen in and communicate and I'd engage and I spoke to him and he spoke to me. He didn't know who I was and I, you know, we was faceless at that time. I didn't stay in the group because my cash flow was tiny. I mean, it's not a gimmick to say I only had 200 pounds. I had to leave before I started that journey, but it was what I saw in that month that made me confident that e-commerce was successful. And as long as I did it right, I couldn't go wrong because failure wasn't an option, right? It was lovely to see Jack so I could go up to him and say thank you. I mean, I had so many people saying thank you to me. <laughs> what a feeling that is, by the way. The opportunity 
for me to say to Jack, look, you're doing the thing. The thing is what helped me. And you could see the smile on his face. And he told me, look, this makes me feel so happy. And that is what I love about everybody in this community. Everyone understands the opportunity that Amazon and e-commerce brings. There's room for all of us. The internet is still fairly new. And if you're willing to come to a networking event and meet people and talk to people and learn about other people's journeys, it shows that you're a good person and that you are in this for the right reasons. So it was lovely to meet everybody. And it, these networking events, I've realized it's where the magic happens. And I don't care what event you go to. I don't care who the brand is. Seller and I, we've got a contract with each other. We've got a partnership. We collaborate. So, of course, I'm going to be there at their events. But that's not to say that you shouldn't go to other events. Throw yourself out there because the opportunity to meet other sellers and learn from them. I met Warren from the Product Blocker. What a lovely guy. Now, he met, we're going to get him on here soon. Another straight up genuine person who wants to help people. Big shouts as well. We got honest FBA Russ who came here, had to run for the train on his way home. And I know his blisters are probably still giving him grief now. Chloe, Peter, Stephanie, Chris, Chris's wife, a bunch of you all. And then on top of that, people from other communities, Tony, Faz, Callum from Arbosource. It was lovely to meet you. I know I'm missing people here and I do apologize. It was so nice for everyone to be so like, generous to me. Oh, and Alison and Al, they got me the best present you could ever have. Look, if you're watching on the YouTube channel, this is my Funko Pop. This is me. Look, there's Hamilton. Even got the glasses, the beard and the grey hoodie. It's amazing because Funko Pops was one of the first products that I was selling. So it's gone full circle. Not only have I, was I selling these to get on the train for e-commerce, I've now got my own one with my own name on it. It's amazing. So again, let's go back to this. Seek out these networking events. These are my feelings, right? I, I don't think I can ever get used to people acknowledging me, especially in a different part of the country where I'm not in my kitchen. But I just wanted to take this time to say thank you. It was lovely, and I'll definitely see you at the next one. Right, let's get on to today's show, shall we? Today's show is with Henry and Mark. Henry and Mark are a father-son team. Henry and Mark sat my mentoring program in its really, really early stages in the mid part of last year. Mark is Henry's dad. Henry is a young teenager. Mark is a guy that I worked with in my day job. He was there about 10 years ago. He was a contractor and he and I met, we were in our similar sort of work and we hit it off and we made friends on Facebook and we stayed friends since. We didn't really speak. I mean, Facebook, right? You don't really speak, do you? If you haven't, if you haven't seen someone for 10 years, it's just the way life is. But then he saw me on in my socials and he didn't quite figure out that it was me because I didn't tell anyone my name was Des at the time, but he was there going, I'm sure that's Des. Then he DM'd me. And at that point, no one knew that I was on the socials, but he was the first one to clock me and say, is this you? <laughs> but I told him everything that I was doing. He was right up for it. We then kept in touch. I told him basically what I was doing on Amazon. When I was offering a mentoring program, he was one of the first to say, can you mentor me? So he came on board and have they kicked on? My God, they really have. They really have. This is the other opportunity where I say, do you know I run a mentoring program? Do you know how successful people have been off the back of this? Yeah, come on. I'm in I'm loving Des I'm in I'm loving Des mode at the moment, so why not sing my own praises? We've got a mentoring program and people are flying. It's just for the beginners on retail and online arbitrage on Amazon. And the goal is to fundamentally get you grounded in the basics. It doesn't teach you wholesale, it doesn't teach you bundles, it doesn't teach you private label, it teaches you online and retail arbitrage including used books, to get you from a tiny amount of money to the crossroads where you can just have a couple of hundred quid to make your life better because who wouldn't want an extra couple of hundred quid each month? Or you can go fully fledged and take that business to the moon. That's what we do. Mark and Henry are in their spaceship, man. They are on their way to the freaking moon. Let me tell you. I'm going to let them tell the story. I'm going to see you at the other end. Remember this, father and son team, young teenager. This boy, Henry, I know you're listening. You are going to be a multi, multi, multi-millionaire, mate. And I'm loving that I had some part of that at the early stages. Just remember. See you on the other side. Right. Mark and Henry, really good to have you on. Welcome to the show. First father and son duo that we've had on here. 
How are you both doing? Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, good. Yeah. yeah, I look forward to this. <laughs> it's going to be a good one, mate. I'm interested. I'm interested. You two are amazing. I've known I've known Mark for a long, long time, I've, and I would have covered this off. We worked together, what, 10 years, 10 years ago? ago now. Yeah. We won't get into the hell we got started and how, yeah, and how we refound each other because we've been following each other on social media for the decade that has gone past, haven't we? But talk us through you two, how you got going, what conversations you two had, what made you want to start and how you pulled the trigger? I started like just trying to earn some pocket money. So I started like washing cars, cutting grass and that. But then, I yeah, but then I did it like during the summer. But there was a heat wave, so of course there was a drought. So the water van oh. came in, and there was because of how hot it was, all the grass was dead. So <laughs> I couldn't make any money. So I just started like asking my dad how I could make some more money, and he was like saying how cutting grass isn't the best thing to do because I have to be there, and if I'm at school, I can't do it. Then started like, looking at other things, so it's other businesses. Yeah, look, 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 looking pretty much at um, passive income. There's no such thing as passive income, is there? Because you know what I mean, because yeah. But, but something that you can do in your spare time, but then sells in the time that you're not working. And, and we've yeah. done, well, I've done multiple things in in, the, in my time. I've um, a cryptocurrency stuff. I've done, I ran a cleaning company. I, I'm an IT consultant. And what else do we do, Henry? We've got the soap, Ocean soap. ocean Vegan Soap. We've done uh, multimedia marketing stuff. We've done all sorts. And, and some have been successful, some haven't been successful. There's been quite a lot of failures along the way, but the failures have been really good. And I think everything yeah. builds up to something. And I think what's been the most successful part about it is we're doing it as a family. So there's me, there's not only me and Henry, there is also Kate, my wife, Henry's mum, who's doing a load of stuff and she's completely sold into this and she's massively on board. Henry, uh, Oscar, the uh, Henry's eldest brother, is in the garage now doing uh, packing boxes with his mate. So we've got our oh, stuff like it. that. So everybody's everybody's um, involved in it, which is different to all the other ones. All the other ones, it was just generally me, or for Henry's, it was, it was Henry doing his own. Whereas this, we got, you know what, we can do this together. And did you get into this knowing it was going to be a family thing, or were you going to dip your toe in the water and then spread out? For me personally, I went about three months before my Claire joined in. It was always on the idea, but I think she needed proof of concept. Yeah, no, no, totally. I mean, for me, for Henry and I, it was us two to start with. And that was the basic retail arbitrage, line arbitrage, which I don't really like. I, I just I just don't like it. I mean, we enjoyed it at the beginning, didn't we? Yeah. And then we said, right, okay, we need to, um, we joined Nasty Karomi's Hive through your suggestion. And I, I started doing the, bu the bundles, looking at the bundles and was like, right, this is it. And then Kate got like, oh, I enjoy, I like the look of this. And then, it's and when you get stuff. It's when you start to get followed in Tesco's by like security guards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we have we have got one guy that follows us, and, and, and even now, and we haven't done any retail arbitrage for a uh, good nine months. Yeah, he still looks at us, and he and he doesn't just work in one Tesco's. He works in a number of different Tesco's in Amber, and, and, and he follows us. He just put, and he's like, he's, he's almost as if he he's got some vendetta against mm. us, hasn't he? No, I love it. But no, Henry, being a teenage boy, mate, being followed by security guards, that's par for the course. They must look at you, Mark, and think that you're some sort of Fagin character. <laughs> it's amazing, though, isn't it, how you do when you get going like that and everyone sees in your household what it is you're doing and the money that's coming in and everyone mucks in. The online arbitrage thing as well, I've got to admit, I completely understand where you're coming from. I'm looking forward to the day that I don't have to do much OA anymore. The only reason I still do it is because I train it and I want to keep my toe in, you know. But I I'll agree with you, when you're fighting for margins and price tankers and you're sort of exploiting clearance sections and all that stuff, I like the RA stuff. There's, I, I quite like finding a little deal in a shop. But at the same point, the OA stuff, it gets quite monotonous after a while, personally. And I much prefer the creativity that bundles and private label can give you. It, it, yeah, it's not just... I don't think the creativity is great. It's, it's also the... You own that. No one else can copy it. Well, they can copy it, but not the same. And you're you're in charge of your destiny, so it's a bit different. It's like running a proper business. I don't. I didn't never found the retail arbitrage and the online arbitrage a proper business as such. I know it is, but yeah, it, it just didn't. It just didn't. Yeah, and we had a few sticky things, didn't we? We we got suspended in um, November last year, so we missed the whole of quarter four. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and I, and I, and I kept buying stuff. And then when once I bought the stuff, once I finally got back on after 
January the 15th, I think it was. Everybody was on them list listings. So we've still got stuff now on our listing. So I uh, I am a tanker. <laughs> we are tankers because we've reduced the price right down just to get rid of it to clear our clear our decks ready for our new stuff. Yeah, I get it. I get it. And I, I think this is worth saying as well. Everyone that moans about tankers at some point would have been a tanker themselves. We've done it. You've got to do it sometimes. We've got some stock that we bought that was terrible stock. And the MOQ was like 60 units. And this thing turns out sales like twice a month. So we've been tanking the price on that for ages just to cut our losses. You've got to, haven't you? Definitely. But Mark, I've always, you've always been like a hustler character from the, from the day I met you. I was a PAYE long-term employee and you were a contractor that came in and you opened my eyes to what contracting could be. I just never had the bottle to pull the trigger. But I remember it was you saying, right, put your CV in here, type that, type that, that's how much you could be earning. And I'm thinking, what? That's amazing. Here I am earning much less than that. But yeah, I, I do love it. How did you decide? So if you want, was it was it me that you found that opened your eyes to Amazon or were you thinking of Amazon before you realised what I was? Uh, we, hadn't, we hadn't thought of Amazon, had we, yeah. at all. And then I saw you because uh, you, you, things come up on your posts and do you know what I mean? I'm, yeah. Well, like I say, I'm a hustler. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment, Des. I really will. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, half. Um, but uh, there's a lot of people that don't come across as trustworthy. And then, then I saw uh, then your posts occasionally came up. And the first couple of ones, I was like, I'm sure that's Des. And you know, obviously, you changed your name back then. And I was like, yeah, yeah. that's Des. I'm sure that's Des. And I thought, do you know what? I'm going to message you. And then, then you came out and said, yeah, you did it. And then, I, and then we, I, I started looking at it a bit more. And then we looked at it, didn't we? And, and you was looking for something else to do. And in fact, we had tried one thing. We tried to sell our soaps on Amazon. So uh, instead of going the normal route of learning Amazon through retail and, and, and online and all of that sort of stuff, we went jump straight in with no training at all and created our own you know, brand listings and put them all onto Amazon and sent some soaps into Amazon. We did all of that. Um, it didn't go well. I think we sold five soaps. Oh, I'm bothered. And then, so we had done it beforehand, yes, but not for this kind of thing. Yeah, no. Uh, no it's, it's funny, actually, because we've actually gone a complete circle, haven't we? Yeah. Because we've sold the soaps mm -hmm. and done our own generic, uh, our own brand, and then we've gone full circle and we're, we're now doing it again. And we'll go back to that with all the knowledge that you've given us, all the knowledge that we've got from the Hive, knowledge from Craig, who would we'll talk about this in a bit the um new business that we've bought all of the uh, just loads of people networks isn't it mm. just networks and and also we did unique bundles with our soap company so and henry had a business hampshire pamper which sold luxury yeah. pampers so henry will chat about that and so we was already doing unique bundles and we liked it give give pampers so it was, yeah. it was just it, it was everything like i said everything's built up and all the knowledge and all the failures and learning from them lessons have all built up to. I love it. I love it. Yeah, Henry, talk us through Hampshire Hampers. Um, so it was sort of after I finished the car washing and grass cutting, I sort of looked at different like niches and stuff and different things I could sell. So I came across like the hampers, but then I, I looked more into it and it was really saturated. Mm. Then I sort of thought like, how can I make this more specific? So I made it more local and only put like local artisan products in. So obviously it would attract more attention. Right, how did you know that I can get hold of that product and that? Well, and it I was sort of, um, we sort of just did Google searches, like just like Hampshire chocolate, Hampshire bath bombs. And then we sort yeah. of just went from there, started emailing the companies and then like, they sort of showed us other people. So they recommended other things. So we, one of the big ones was Hampshire candles. The guy, yeah. Tom, uh, showed us a lot more people and like recommended a lot of other companies like new forest tea and other places yeah there, there was quite a lot that you um so henry henry did all of that networking by himself obviously i had to go with him he sells on amazon he's in the top 10 sellers for candles on on amazon um, wow. and wow he, he gave it gives henry loads of advice he, he's invited us around we, we just need to find the time to go and see him again but yeah he started from his bedroom and he's like one of the top sellers on amazon now uh, and then he introduced us to the, the tea guy, Ian. I mean, there was a funny story about Henry contacting people and then Henry put his own phone number on there and some, some oh, guy no. phoned him up. And the one guy, he was, he was like, 
how old are you? <laughs> and then he's like, oh, I'm 13. Oh, like, can you pass me across to your parents? <laughs> well, that was going to be my next question. How open were you about how old you were and what you were doing? I mean, you, you sort of got to be quite open because I'll find out eventually. Yeah, when you walk yeah. in and go, hello. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, right. So we sort of mainly used your emails, didn't we? So then, and said that like you'll come with me yeah and yeah won't just be yeah. me so we, so we so we did a like an email template yeah. and then yeah. it, it, in that template it said um i am only 13 my dad knows about this he gets all the emails so we just used the, the generic hello at ocean.com emails so that yeah. everybody knew and and i could see everything that was going backwards and forwards so it was, yeah it was it was apart from you putting your phone number on there that's <laughs> but yeah, I suppose you've got to make them feel safe yeah, and secure. It's, it's not about us really, because we can protect Henry to the to the degree. That's we, it. We've got full clarity on this side. It's just the other side. It's them feeling comfortable. And some people didn't. Some people were just not comfortable. But generally, most people were and were like, "How old are you? Wow, that's amazing." Yeah. And I, think, I, I bet you found that people were much more friendly, you know. I bet if, Mark, if you were to go to the same people and go in as a cold email, you might get a different response to say you did, Henry. Yeah. Your age probably worked in your benefit at that point, mate, because all of a sudden everyone loves helping someone young get their foot on the ladder, right? Yeah. yeah. I think that helped a lot my age. It still does. Yeah. You need to, you need to stop getting older. <laughs> yeah. 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 You can you can a 13-year-old who just can put his people in the world. <laughs> I'm starting to feel like faking here. This is shocking. <laughs> I love it though. So, what were you doing? Were you telling your mates at school at the same time? I didn't like tell like, everyone, be like, oh, look at me. I sort of just like told a couple of people, some yeah. of my friends and that. Then everyone sort of found out when it came to like the Christmas fair at school. Henry was in the local paper, and everyone was, everyone was like, oh, you've got business. Oh, well, and then we yeah. was on, uh, what was it called? Andover Advertiser. It was the Amber advertiser, and it was on the radio guy. Oh, thing. Yeah, Love Andover. Yeah, Love Andover. They, uh, he, did, he did a uh, an article, a blog on Henry, and people found that as well. So amazing, amazing! I bet you loved it. Yeah, didn't it? it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> so all of the time you're doing this, and you can see the business working, and you can see the mechanisms of it all, and you've got your dad working with you, saying, "Right, this is what's achievable." How was school at that point? How difficult was it just to, to concentrate on the things you needed to concentrate at school? Well, at school, I sort of just, like, it's hard to think about business because of, like, the work that we have to do. So it mm. ended up, like, at school, I just didn't think about it. But then when I got home, I also did badminton, so I didn't think about it then. And then I'd yeah. end up, like, waking up earlier to think, like, to do more time on business, and I'd go to school, and I'd stay up late playing badminton. Yeah, so be like, fair enough. Like you're living a double life. Like even longer days. And then on the weekends, yeah. if I didn't have anything, I'd obviously just do the business. Got you. Got you. So once you did the, we did the mentoring and you guys kicked on fairly quickly from that point as well, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Did you go straight into the hive after the mentoring ended or was there a period of you no. just sort of growing? No, we went into the hive. So the mentoring ended. We did we, we did some online stuff. I was over an hour and about the hive, and then we we decided that we were going to do some ocean bundles type stuff on um, with soap and candles and things. Um, and then you recommended the hive. I, I remember seeing a post and you recommended it, and I went, "Do you know what? I'm doing it." I, I, yeah. And then I went onto the hive. And then when Henry played badminton on a Tuesday in Salisbury, I took my laptop of two hours of no. Not nobody around, nobody bothering me. Just sat in the cafe, just going through. Um, it's it's really quite hard to listen to. Well, it's the same with you to listen to Natalie in normal, unspeeded up. Thing because it was always I was always on one and a half speed, one times. You learned, and when I hit, listen to a normal now, and, and she won't mind me saying this, I'm sure. It, it's just weird. <laughs> it's weird. I, I get it. I can't listen to any podcast whatsoever now on less than one and a half speed. Like, even the football ones. I've been listening to the football ones and the Euros. And if if Lineker's not at one point five, it sounds like someone's put him on go yeah, slow. Yeah, yeah. I, I love it. I love it. Even when I do these podcasts and I re-listen to it in the edit, I have to speed you up because if it, yeah, it freaks me out. So then you guys are growing. You're getting you're getting on with the business. Everything's going the way you're going. How did you find your relationship sort? 
go at that point? Was there, right, we got a normal father-son thing here and then we got a business partner thing here. So I, I say this with my wife. We need to sort of know the, the differences between, right, where are we husband and wife and where are we business partners, you know? How have you found it? Um, we sort of just, it's, we sort of know when, like, the business ends and when it starts. If it's getting yeah. a bit too stressful, we should just stop it and like just give it a bit of time and come back to it when we're a bit more ready. Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I can get quite short, get quite short and snappy at times. Uh, yeah, it's quite hard. It's, it's better because we're all involved, so yeah. it's you divide and conquer. So before it'd be just me doing everything on other businesses, whereas this we've got four of us doing it. I, I don't have to worry about packing. We don't have to outsource the packing. We don't. We've got two lads sat there work, working now, work for yeah. five hours each, yeah, every day. So we don't have to worry about that. We, I need. So that means that all I need to worry about is packing into cardboard boxes at the end of the day. Yeah. So we'll, in a couple of weeks, we'll we'll add that to their uh, list of things to do, and then the other orders coming in that are not Amazon, like eBay, TikTok, website, um, the direct orders for all the estate agents and all of that sort of stuff. We'll, we'll get yeah. them to take them on and then that relieves another thing, doesn't it? And it's, it's all about that changing and Kate's a project manager, so she's uh, really good at Excel. <laughs> yeah, She's a small cheat geek. Um, <laughs> That's amazing though. You've got an in-house project manager. That's amazing. Yeah, no, no, it, it is totally. And and, and she, she manages all the stock. She's just writing our business plan. We're just doing uh, a PowerPoint of and, and really making it a bit more jazzy and a bit more interesting, a bit more because uh, we don't we, we don't want to get bogged down in words and stuff. We haven't got the time for that. We we just yeah. need the word everything on there enough for us to uh, go out, get a loan, do uh, get some investment or do whatever just to really propel the business further forward in a, in a short period of time as possible. Yeah, no, I love it. So have we got Vizio out yet? Have we got diamonds and triangles? No, and no, we, haven't, we, no, we haven't got Vizio. Um, <laughs> um, I live my life in Vizio with my new... I know. I know I haven't. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is it. It's amazing, isn't it, how people work differently. So for a business plan for me, it has to be a Word document. I can't... I deal with pictures mostly, but when it comes to a business plan, it has to be a formal yeah. document. We literally knocked one up last week and we went for a Weatherspoon's breakfast to talk it through. You know what I mean? And... But broke down our three month goals, our six month goals, our twelve month goals, and, and everything that needs doing. But what's really nice about this whole business, and I don't know if this is true for traditional bricks and mortar business, but it just seems that Amazon in general and all sorts of things e commerce, it lends itself to a compartmentalized flow, doesn't it? Everything's got its task, its start and end, whether it's boxing or packaging or labeling, sourcing, you can put a timeline on it. You know, most of the stuff has got a start, a middle and an end. So you can delegate fairly easily, can't you? It's the strategy that sort of when you start talking about that, that can sort of overflow, I guess, different opinions and all that. It is. It's about where we want to be. So so we're all on different journeys. Um, I want to stop my nine to five. Because even, even though I'm doing yeah. contracting, it's still nine to five. You're still answering to someone. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Um, I want to yeah. be my own boss. So, um, but I'm 47, so I need to start cracking on and, and get it. So I've got a, a different time, different journey. Henry's just starting out. He's got school, but he's got his own journey, and he's looking at the rest of his life. So it's a different. It's a different journey. Oscar's on a different journey. He he's going to college, so he, he likes football, so he's going to do that. And then he's got a own nice. journey. So we're all trying to get all four of those journeys into a roadmap and a strategy. It's, it's yeah. really quite hard, but we have certain things within those journeys that are all similar to each other. And yeah. as long as we can yeah. identify them, and then we can push, really push that forward. And, and we, we've got, we've all got the same goal of moving this forward as quickly as possible as we can in a short, in the shortest period. If you don't do it quick enough, then you'll get overtaken. We've all got different risk appetites as well. Risky, Kate's very risk averse. I, I, I love risk and I'll just take it on in a measured yeah. way. And, and you're very similar to me and Oscar's very similar to Kate. So it's, it's a good balance. Yeah, no, it's not. And I completely agree, by the way. It, it seems to be with e-commerce that if you're not growing, you're actually shrinking. There is, there is no maintaining because if you stand still, other people will go past you and you haven't got the luxury at the moment. I don't know, but I'm, I was 42 when I got started on this. I'm 44 now. I would like to think that by 50, I am as rich in reality as I am in my head. 
you know, I, I would like to think that I've got enough money there to do what I want to do by 50. That gives me another six years from now, which is a long time in this game, yeah, it is. To, to scale up. Have, have you guys got any age-related goals? Henry, have you got anywhere you want to be by the time you're 21? Um, well, I'd like to be self-sufficient by 16, so, like, have my own business and actually, like, start churning in quite a bit. But 21, yeah. hopefully be a bit free. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, 21... It's quite a while away, that. It is. It's quite a while. Seven years yeah. away. So, you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. similar, similar goals to you, Des. If you're not six, seven figures by the time you're 21, then I've done something wrong, <laughs> I think. Or, 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 or together as a, as, a, as a collective, we've done something wrong. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Definitely achievable. It's Absolutely. Just, yeah. I mean, we've put a little goal on us. So, uh, we want to move house. And, and we've put that as a, as like a little family goal to move, to move house to somewhere nice, big, Obviously, have some workshops and stuff, so we can we don't have to pay out um, yeah. for, for premises um, by the end of next year. And what we want is to be turning over six figures by the end of next year, and, and not not just small six figures. We want to be in the high up towards seven figures. And for, what sales? Revenue. Uh, yeah, just revenue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, mean, I mean, we work on the profit. We do the high third, third, third yeah. thing, and um, yeah, we need to be there next year. So the and we will we'll do it. The only thing that will stop us or slow us down, cash flow. Cash yeah. flow is really hard, but it's like, right, okay, where can we get cash from? And it's just like, yeah, we need cash. We need cash. The amount of money we spend on jam, jam, <laughs> <laughs> jam, jam and hot chocolate. Yeah. Jeez, yeah. <laughs> I'm not chocolate the bane of my life. Bane of- oh, don't. Yeah. It's the thing that they're the two staples that get me through yeah. the day. So, so yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, cash flow. And it is time. Those are the two things that, that are really risk. Risk's not a problem. Everything else is doable. Do you know what I mean? You can find space. You can find this. You can find that. Time. Definitely. And cash flow. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I sat, I sat a, a program, a midweek mentoring for a course that I'm on. And we were talking about things that you can do to overcome cash flow. If you were to find a product that you know is banging, could you get hold of money? And it's one of those, isn't it? If you ask yourself, if I'm desperate for money because I know something will turn a profit, can I know someone that can get their hands on 10 grand? And we all can, can't we? You know, you think hard enough and there's always someone you could approach and say, look, I'll give you 8% return if you give me this. And they'll probably sign it. But it's, again, that's a risk in itself. You need to know what you're doing to the point where you're comfortable in reaching out. Because let's face it, if it didn't work, it's a relationship breaker. (laughs) So it's, uh, yeah, really interesting, isn't it? The whole time and money equals success and how you can leverage all three of those elements to try and make the triangle fit. That's scaling up in a nutshell, isn't it? It, it is fascinating. It is fascinating. But it sounds like you guys have got your head screwed on, though. <laughs> yeah, well, I, think we, I think we have. I, I think one of the benefits that we've had is buying Nibula. So we, we, we bought Nibula, which is a guy, Craig Stevens, awesome guy, set up nebula two years ago and people watching your podcast will know nebula because they are direct competitors of this and you can you can see it because i know they're there um but we put we he, he put a post on the hive saying i'd like to sell my business and yeah uh, it's a gift business and it was like and i saw it and i was like oh i don't know i don't know and i just went we'd like to uh, know more i had a meeting with him and within that weekend we went right we'll do it um we'll find the cash from somewhere and we literally just found the cash from somewhere and uh, we did a proposal, didn't we? Yeah. So we, we went all to town on this. Instead of doing a proposal in a, in a spreadsheet, we did this really glossy PowerPoint that had our company and, and Nibula and how it joined together and how we'd take it forward in the future and all the cash projections and all of that sort of stuff, all in, all in the thingy. I mean, um, Henry had some great ideas and 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 Craig would love to hear this but uh, Henry said well, why are you offering that why don't you offer this which was uh, a little benefit to us and uh, yeah really good but yeah we did that as a family we just sat down <laughs> one Sunday afternoon like you love it in... yeah that's why bosh 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 send it out and Craig went yeah didn't he yeah then we went to see him yeah didn't we I went to see him so so we've just gone live on Amazon on the 7th of July it was already live but the, all the um, stock had run out from Craig. 7th of right. July, we reduced the price with some advice from Natalie. And within what we are now, 23rd of July, we sold 400 
afternoon tea boxes in probably one of the quietest months in Amazon in the Amazon year. Oh, yes. They are set every time I look at my thingy, and I'm stopping looking at that because it's boring me now. Um, we're selling <laughs> 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 a day. Wow. I'm watching the football, and some woman just bought 15 jam boxes. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, it, it, I think there's a lot of teachers' presents there because they're really good teachers' presents. So I think yeah, that's, good that, that's what, what we were selling them. For, and I think August is going to be quite quiet. But what we've done is you build up a business and you build it up over time. And it takes it takes time to do that. What we've done is we've taken our business from there, leapfrogged and gone to there. And yeah. because Craig has done such a wonderful thing with the branding and the, and the, and the marketing and his A-plus content on Amazon, um, and just getting the name out, it's it's propelled us so much further, and we've got such a great product. But now it's now it's the hard slog of the day to day running of it, and, yeah. and just looking at like, how much does it cost to make a box, not just the stuff that goes in it, the box, the packing, the straw. It's yeah. the manpower, it's the lighting, it's everything like that. We've Kate's done a huge spreadsheet of of every single different platform we sell on with every different profit. And we know exactly what profits are we get from every single platform and whether we sell it direct and all of this sort of stuff. And we, we've split tasks up so that Henry's in in charge of uh, future products. So we've got already got um, one future products where we, we're just waiting for some artwork for it. Henry's created that one. We've got another one that's, that's come in. We've got then another one coming. So within the next... A lot more coming. Yeah, it, well, there they are. That's that. Oh, that's it. And his mind map on his wall. Love yeah, it. We've got, we've got, we've got, learned, and it's just, we've learned a lot in a month, haven't we? Yeah. We've worked really hard and learned a lot. All right, let's pause it there. That's part one. Lovely, isn't it? Those are the challenges. So I run a business with my wife. You should know that by now. Me and Claire, we run this together. And we have the dynamic of husband and wife, partner directors, then also husband and wife. It's really important that you differentiate that. Those two, father, son, also another child, and also Mark's wife. That's a whole family. I have no doubt my family will get there, by the way. I'm going to have all four of them there. We're going to be the e-commerce version of the Von Traps, for God's sake. <laughs> but I'll be using Mark as my experience. How did you do that? How did you do that? How did you do that? And we get a bit more into that next week when we start talking about how the line is, really. How far a net does Mark cast when it comes to Henry going out there, learning for himself, yet needing protection? Conundrum, right? We'll get into that next week. But for this week, I'll tell you what, let's get to the tip of the week, shall we? Tip of the week. If you are fortunate enough to have a family member supporting you, whether that's your spouse or whether it's your children or whether it's your parents, Make sure everybody knows where everybody stands in the business and in the family. Make sure everybody knows there's an on and off switch. When are you family? When are you business? How are you allowing the two lines to blur? It's so important. This is where communication is vital. Blimey, I'm taking on the role of a family counsellor here, for God's sake. I'm sure you do this. It's got to be common sense, isn't it? You need to know this is when we don't talk business. That's it. It's a short one. But I think it's a vital one. And if you're not doing that, have a word with yourself. Tip of the week. That's the show. A fairly long one, I think, today, because I pretty much rambled on about how wonderful I am for the first 15 minutes. But it don't matter. I'm pretty sure no one listens to this last bit. So I'm just going to carry on talking about nothing in particular. Look, I'm joking. Bring in the voiceover. Bring in the stuff. Lovely, lovely, lovely week this week. It's been so nice to meet so many of you in person. And anyone that said anything nice to me, I can't tell you how much it affected me. And I'm so, so grateful for anyone that said anything horrible to me. I didn't listen. Right. That'll do. Have a lovely week. Take care. Enjoy the sun. Ta-da.